I will now give the floor over to Ms. Rosalind Imbrock. Good afternoon, everyone, and I'm very pleased to see all of you here. It is my task to give you the historical struggle for civil rights and voting rights in the United States. As many of you may know, the NAACP was founded in 1909 to ensure the political, educational, social, and economic equality of rights for all persons of all races. It was created as a counterbalance to the white supremacy groups that were all too common in America at the time. It remains a counterbalance to the institutional racism that is all too common in our country today. Our organization has had a very long and storied history and partnership with the United Nations. On De December the 1st, 1918, one of our founders, W.E.B. Du Bois, traveled to France as a representative of the NAACP for the League of Nations, the predecessor of the United Nations, where a resolution was adopted that it was the right of people of African descent to have a voice in their own government. And whenever there was an abuse of this regard, it is the duty of the United Nations to publicize these conditions. In 1935, the NAACP petitioned the League of Nations to protest the proposed British Franco agreements, which would have settled the Italian Ethiopian War by giving half of the African nation to Italy. In 1944, we note that Roy Wilkins and Clarence Mitchell participated in drafting certain sections of the United States Charter at the Durbanton Oaks Conference. In 1945, Walter White and Dr. DeBose boys proposed to the United Nations Conference on International Organizations that the colonial system be abolished and equality of races recognized. We are in, have gathered today in the legacy of W.E.B. Du Bois and Walter White for 1947, they presented a 155 page petition entitled An Appeal to the World that documented the history of racism in America to this body. The NAACP petition was debated for two days at a meeting in Geneva, which resulted in the drafting committee of the United Nations Human Rights Commission. But it was in 1947 that our organization cemented its involvement in the global movement for equality and justice. Dr. Du Bois's appeal entitled An Appeal to the World spoke of a nation that was built on principles of equality yet treated 10% of its citizens as a segregated caste. It described the plight of African Americans in the middle of the 20th century. He believed that something had gone wrong with the American dream. He knew the United States was founded on the principle that all men and women are created equal. Yet the nation tolerated a, bru a brutal slave trade for eight decades. After the emancipation, many states passed Jim Crow laws that mandated segregation. African Americans sat in separate rail cars, drank from separate water fountains, and studied in separate and inferior schools. He knew the United States was founded on the ideal that government is, quote, by the people and for the people that man can control his own destiny through the power of the vote. But Du Bois saw a coordinated legislative attack on the right to vote. Many southern states introduced poll tax to restrict the vote to those who could afford it. Others introduced literacy tests, and still others schemes to limit the vote. These laws certainly disenfranchised African Americans whose parents and grandparents had been slaves. They also disenfranchised poor, uneducated white Americans whose ancestors had founded our great nation. 65 years later, the United States has changed thanks to the work of W.E.B. Du Bois, the NAACP, and the millions of Americans who refuse to accept discrimination and disenfranchisement as a way of life. But despite our best efforts, 
we know that there is still something wrong with the American dream. In 2012, we see the explicit racism of yesterday turn into the institutionalized inequity and inequality of today. The United States was founded on the principle of all men and women are created equal. But America is still, my friends, a country of deep gaps. The employment gap, the health care gap, the justice gap. The United States, a country that we love so dearly, was founded on the ideals that government is and should be forever by the people who will control their destiny through the power of the franchise, and that is the right to vote. So we are here today in the legacy of our founders to cross that great bridge and to speak truth to what's happening in our nation under the weight of voter suppression. We return to the United Nations today to make another appeal to the world